Hey everybody, welcome to my spoiler review of Blue Beetle, directed by Angel Manuel Soto and written by Gareth Dunnett Alcocer. We've seen it before, right? The superhero tropes, the superhero story, the hero's journey. But this time, it feels better. It feels grounded, rooted with so much heart that it really kind of sparked this joy, once again, of why do I like these movies? In my non-spoiler review, I said the best comparison I can make for this film is Spider-Man, Sam Raimi's Spider-Man. And that movie is a cornerstone of my life, including Spider-Man 2. I was in high school when those came out. That was a very, very important time in my life in figuring out who I was and what I stood for and the morality around Spider-Man and doing the right thing and taking care of your family and all that being wrapped up in superheroes that I've loved ever since watching them as cartoons as a kid or reading the comics. This harkens back to that. It is not some convoluted plot where they spent 200 something million dollars on that didn't even make sense. No, this was something awesome. Everybody should be proud. Now, I'm going to be talking about spoilers in this. I'm not going to rehash the entire story. I'm going to talk about the moments that really spoke to me. And we'll try to start from the beginning. The opening sequence. What an awesome soundtrack, bro. I'm going to be firing that up tonight. When I start to relax a little bit before I get to wake up super early tomorrow. Again, because your, your guy is busy, all right? <laughs> the stinger for Blue Beetle. -na 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 -na. Like, it's almost reminiscent of Spider-Man, but it's going to be with Blue Beetle for the rest of my life, I think, for th probably for the rest of Blue Beetle's life, at least in this iteration. I dug it. What a great theme. Every time Blue Beetle shows up in Injustice 3 or anywhere else, -na -na -na. like, I want to hear that, dude. Awesome. And once that music started to play and I heard that stinger, I went, this is dope. I'm sold. This is great. Great stinger for Blue Beetle. Great job to the sound team. Whew. Okay, so right at the beginning of the story, I feel a lot of people are going through this. Uh, I will, you know, I would like to say a lot of men, I'm sure women for sure, but a lot of men really know the feeling of, yeah, let me go to school, let me go into some debt, let me get a degree, and oh, my family made a lot of sacrifices and I ended up right where I started, except with more debt. And they make these little jokes at the beginning, it's like... This is really true, bro. This is the this is this constant cycle of poverty. We're trying to dig our way out of it, but then you're just saddled with more debt, and then you're tied to a corporation to try to pay off the debt, and you finally pay it off by the time you're 40. But then you start to think maybe you could buy a house, and you're like, what's the point? There's no way I could afford it. I mean, you could you could feel that in just the opening minutes of dialogue with the family, and it wasn't pushed, it wasn't preached, it just was real like real people talking in the real world. So I really enjoyed how quickly they allowed us, the audience, to really resonate with this Reyes family, with Jaime and everybody else. And that is the core of the success of this film is you care about what happens to the characters. You actually care. Within the first couple moments, you care. Uh, Jaime, you know, being maybe a little bit naive, but standing up to the rich, standing up to Susan Sarandon's character, you're like, Bro, you can't be doing that. You got to be scraping the gum off over there. You can't. You, the staff doesn't talk. But uh, at first, you're kind of taken back like, oh, great, Jaime is going to get in trouble and be kind of goofy. But he's like, yo, she said back off, ma'am. Plus, you know, the girl is hot. <laughs> uh, Bruna Marquezine. I hope I pronounced that correctly. But she plays Jenny Cord. And when you first see her, you're like, okay, she, she's got a great stylist. She looks good. But not, you know, business good. Not over the top. And... The way that she stands up for this vision of her father and who her father was and this heartbreak that she feels with her aunt and this animosity and this anger. Like, you all get that in a matter of seconds, bro. Just a couple lines. Like, dang, okay, there's some complications with this family. But the way that Jaime stood up and to do something and then it, you know, he got fired along with his sister. And then when they left, Jenny says, you know, I appreciate the chivalry, but I don't need your help. I'll be fine. And, you know, he's like, all right, cool, no problem. She's like, you know what, let me give me your, give me your number. Come by tomorrow, I can get you a job. You know, you, you stood up for me. And it was nice. It wasn't too over the top. Again, he wasn't being uh, a jerk. He just stood up for somebody, which is what heroes do. So in that little moment, you could feel why the Scarab chose him. But also how much the family believes in him and leans on him and is rooting for him. So all these reasons you feel that's why the Scarab chose him, you know. Uh, 
another moment that really endeared me to the family when Alberto, the father, Jamie's father, tipped 25% when they were out to eat. And the mother's like, 25%, you know, we can't afford that. And the dad's like, these people hardly make anything. <sighs> I'm starting to tear up now, but bro, I started to tear up in the movie theater. Because I think one of the greatest tests of character for anybody, for anybody on this planet, is to see how they treat service workers. I mean, when you don't have much, but you still try to take care of the people around you, that, that really meant a lot, dude. So to the writer and to the director to make sure that you had that scene there with the father for something that may seem so inconsequential, dude, like that made me a fan of the film even more so. So kudos to the creative team of having that line of dialogue. That really made a difference to me. Thank you. The family's rooting for Jaime, man. You, you, from the trailers, you're like, oh, it's kind of annoying. But no, it's not. I mean, it's a little bit like, okay, guys, take a pause, take a break. But that's, that's the joy and the humor of the film, is that you have families that are like that. Uh, maybe a little bit embellished here in the film. But to really have that bond and to have people care about you that much, you could feel that Jenny did not have that, even though she had all the money. And... I'll talk about that a little bit later in the spoiler, but I, the duality of those two characters, and they make fun of the duality in one of these novellas back in the day, uh, <laughs> uh, really rang true. It, that hit, it hit a lot of different notes. That was awesome. The inclusion of Toyota, Toyota should be happy. <laughs> I think Toyota would be very happy. I saw Toyota kind of all over the the step and repeat when it came to the premiere, but I, this, if I had the money, I'd go buy to Toyota Tacoma after watching this film, man. It was, it was cool to see a car and a brand utilized in the story, but not over the top and not like, wink, wink, nut, dutch, we're using a Toyota, but no, it was Rudy's car that he souped up. <laughs> and it was a cool car, the Taco, the Taco, yeah, man. Toyotas are nice cars. They're nice. All right. Uh, a lot of other cars that are out there. In case anybody wants to sponsor me, let's go for it. There was one sequence that I was most intrigued about when it came to the film. And that was the body horror when the scarab is a part of his body. And Rudy's like, it went up his ass, man. <laughs> uh, but it, it attaches to Jaime's body. And that entire sequence, man, was a bit frightening, bro. bit scary and really effective. And really cool. The transition of your life is never going to be the same again. You are now fused symbiotically with an alien life form, a weapon destroying uh, entity, a, a, a entity that can destroy planets. I mean, it's crazy to think about, but that entire sequence, especially when he burns his shoes, you're like, not the shoes, bro, not the shoes. Symbolic of your life's never going to be the same. And it was, it was cool because the suit is practical. So yeah, those visual effects, you can tell they're visual effects, but because the suit's practi practical, the end result is practical, it feels more real in a way. It felt more real in our brains, at least in my brain, that I was willing to go along for the ride. The suspension of disbelief. So for sure, man, the suit was great. The, that whole sequence, the bit of the body horror was really cool, very effective. No big sword sequence. So in the trailer, there's a big sword that he uses, a big buster sword that, as anime fans are like, oh, shoot, man, he's got a Cloud Strife buster sword. That was not in the film, unless I missed it. But I was looking for that part, and it wasn't an A. It could have been part of the daily. They got rid of it, or maybe it was a test screening for the suit. But it would have been cool to see a bit of that uh, sword play. He does use blades in the film, though, just not a big buster sword. The villain, Carapax, Raul Max Trujillo. Great job, man. What a, what a way to really be a presence in a film and to maintain that presence all the way through the film and notice that presence has layers, especially the way he uses his eyes. And you see the villain at the very beginning of the movie, which I think sets it up very nice. They're trying to get that scarab. They're trying to get that thing inside that giant uh, ball. And so it's like, okay, here we have giant corporation trying to get this item, and here is the heavy. Here is the man that's going to make it happen. Uh, Harvey Guillen? who plays Dr. Sanchez. <laughs> uh, he's Perito from Puss in Boots, and it was great to see him in the movie. And dude, his facial reactions, his acting in a number of different sequences and parts was like, I think he's not on board with this plan. I think he's not on board in this plan. So when he has that final turn and he tries to rescue Jaime and he loses his life because of it, it was, it was such an effective 
There's that word again, effective, but it really was, you know. Even though Harvey had a quote unquote small role, there's no such thing as a small role, just small actors, and Harvey Guillen is great on screen. I hope to see more of him uh, in live action, but definitely a wonderful voice performance in Puss in Boots, The Last Wish. So shout out to Dr. Sanchez and his great performance. Uh, Bruna, so Bruna Marchesine as Jenny Cord, she misses having a family. And the real chemistry you feel between her and Sholo Maradueña, I don't know if they're dating in her life or not, but dude, Sholo, if she's into it, go for it, buddy! Who like you are rooting for them so much, and when <laughs> when they're having different conversations, you're like, all right, they get a kiss, and you know that they know it, you know that they feel it. Ah, it's so good. So uh, kudos to the director for building up those moments with the actors, where we as the audience is rooting for them. And yes, there is a, a massive, awesome payoff at the end. And dude, dude. Jaime has moves. We'll talk about that at the end, guys. But guys, that was the step-by-step -step what to do when you're in a public setting with a lady at a party. Well, okay, we'll go over it later. Uh, but that duality of having a family and not having a family but having money. And, you know, if Jamie, if, excuse me, if Jenny was in the same situation as Jaime, there's nobody rooting for her. Her aunt tried to kill her multiple times, bro. <sighs> That really, that really helped establish why family is so important for me, of just seeing that duality in the two. And when you look at somebody on Instagram, you see Jaime scrolling through Instagram, you know, you see different pictures of her, and her sister's doing it too, but she's like, yeah, she's single. And he's like, oh, she's single? Like, you can't tell on Instagram, man. That's like the best version of us all the time. But it's, it's, a, it's a black mirror, <laughs> is what it is. <sighs> okay. Yeah, let's talk about it. So, Belissa Escobedo. When her dad is dying, when Alberto is dying. Ooh. And the director and the editor made that choice of the sirens and the screams and the sirens and the screams. He And then he didn't make it. And then the family starts to break down. Bro, her screaming for her mom. <laughs> Ugh, apologies. I don't think I have felt the stakes that high for civilians in a long time. Where you really feel the impact of this corporate entity is going to go full bore to get what they want. And man, doesn't that kind of sound familiar? I'm thinking more and more about this script and the layers to it and a bit of the genius. I say a bit, but probably deserves a lot more of making this about so much of the Latin American experience versus the American corporate empire. And that ties into the villain. The ending, the having, having empathy for your enemy by realizing how this enemy came to be. What happened in their life to make them become this. And when the scarab when the scarab realizes, when, when uh, Kaiji, I believe her name, Kaiji Da, I believe its name is, uh, I want to say her, because it's a female voice, um, realizing from taking the memories of that download process, bro. I mean, it was like I was watching the Untold History of the United States in a dramatic fashion, in a short sequence, yet was so profound, if you know the history, uh... I, I wanted to give the director a big hug. I wanted to give him a big hug and be like, man, thank you for having the courage to have this in a superhero movie, to have this be the backstory of a villain, and to have the villain and the hero understand each other. Whew. That's some heavy lifting to do, and they did it in this film. Very effective. <laughs> There's that word again. Really, really beautiful and haunting and scary and sad sequence for the greater good. Sacrifice for the greater good. Well, who's good? Corporate interests. The shareholders for their good. How many people have to die so that we can bring down bananas 10 cents? I mean, that's, that's the literal spreadsheets back then, chat. Maybe even more. 
Maybe even more recent. Anyways, scary to think about. But that's what this movie brings up. Not telling you, showing you. Carapax became a monster. And Blue Beetle saw why he became a monster. And it was not corny. It felt real. That ending... When Jaime charges up, that big anime charge up, that scream, you could feel it, bro. And then he did that huge beam attack. Uh, I mean, that was as effective as some animes that I've seen, if not more so. That, I feel the goosebumps in the back of my neck thinking about it, dude. The theater changed. You could feel, maybe I even audibly heard a gasp of just the sheer rage and the manifestation of that rage into a weapon of power Whew. I mean that sequence is worth the price of admission alone everybody really good stuff the legacy of the American corporate empire in Latin America Nana that's how she had her history of fighting against the imperialist that's what made it believable instead of like oh she's just a random old lady that can shoot a, a minigun no she's done it before <laughs> She fought in wars when she was younger, and I believed it. And what a great joke, but also stemming from reality, and that's why it works. I kind of wish they didn't reveal it in the trailer that Nana was going to use the big gun. But it's kind of funny. It made you realize that this family was going to be part of the entire story, the show. It wasn't going to be, oh, i got to keep this secret from my family. Because that's the difference with Spider-Man, especially Miles Morales. His family doesn't know. Here, Blue Beetle, his family knows, bro. The family knows. Uh, <laughs> oh, that moment when Jaime was processing that this is going to be for life that the only way that, that the other person that had the scarab was relieved from the scarab is that that person died that they took the scarab out of their body so not only Jaime's reaction to that but Jenny's reaction you know, she had no idea that the scarab was going to activate nobody could activate it even her father couldn't activate it but he based a lot of technology around it I really felt that too, where he was like, I want to explode with emotion, but I'm just going to go for a walk. I want to be alone for a bit. And then his uncle comes and gives him a really, really good pep talk and a really good story about his father and, you know, how crossing the border, yeah, it was hard, but the next 20 years, how hard was that? And how his father worked 16 hours a day to bring the rest of the family over the border. These are real stories, folks. I've met a lot of these people. They said, well, yeah, I'm here illegally, but the choice was die in a civil war or take the risk and bring my family up here to the United States where we could probably survive. If I was a father in the same situation, I'd make the same choice. So I think it's more of an indictment on the current policies of the American empire at the moment that's causing people to have to move out of their towns and homes. And hey, there's plenty of documentaries about that too. But to feel the repercussions of that with this family, uh, again, felt really true to the Latino experience. This is for life. Could you imagine being bonded with an alien entity for the rest of your life, bro? Even though like you could fly and do cool stuff, like that's, that's a tall order. That's a tall order. Another one, another moment that I really enjoyed was when Jaime and Jenny were just about to kiss. Great conversation between the two when she was talking about her mom and family. And then Rudy jumps in to interrupt and he's like, oh, hey, I'm sorry. But then they get up to go and Jaime has to cover himself a little bit with his jacket when he gets up. It's just a close, it's a, it's a brief shot. It's <laughs> it works so well with the perfect blocking on camera and it was fast enough not to be too crass but there for a laugh I thought that was like a just a perfect balance between we're going to have a boner joke but we're not going to go too far here All right, and it was awesome man it was like how do you walk that tightrope of hey we're sexual beings okay especially when <laughs> these folks are in their 20s how can we tie that into stuff here without going too far it's still making a movie that's pg-13 and again that was one of those jokes that i think worked very well who that ending charge up man that anime charge up i'm still gonna be thinking about that shout dude for sure wow carapax why would anybody do this this is why seeing that reveal was was huge but the other part of the ending that i really enjoyed and i could feel this when you saw the neighbors check in was the neighborhood rallied and brought food and was there to 
to be with the family after the funeral. You know, they were they were dressed in back. But then Jenny shows up and she's got a new car for her, for uh, Rudy. And he's like, "Wow, blue, right? Little on the nose, huh?" <laughs> and they're like, "Come on, man, say thank you." He's like, "All right, come, come, come with me. Help me like it. Help me like it." I thought that was a great line. Help me, <laughs> help me like it. But dude, George Lopez crushing in this role, man. I would want to. I'd love to see a sequel with this entire family with Jaime for sure. I want to see what where they're gonna go in the DCU. I'm gonna be thinking about this family for a long time. <laughs> they really did it, man. Can you imagine how tough it is to make a superhero movie these days when everybody is so cynical and deservedly so? We're cynical because we're being fed crap. And we know it's crap. And we vote with our dollars, man. But this one, this one really stands up. This one really stands up. Taking care of your local community. So one note, one beat in this film is when Rudy uh, is told by Jenny that Ted Cord was Blue Beetle. And Rudy's like, whoa, he was Blue Beetle? Oh, man, this is great. You're like, he took care of us in Palmyra City. Metropolis has Superman. Central City has Flash. Palmyra City has Blue Beetle. But, you know, he just wasn't as cool. He wasn't as good. And, man, I felt that. I felt that, yeah, Blue Beetle's C-tier, B-tier character, D-tier D -tier characters. Like, Blue Beetle's got heart, man. And this movie brought that heart to the screen. So I really like that Rudy respected Blue Beetle and Ted Cord for being the Blue Beetle and telling Jenny, like, hey, you can call me whatever you want. You can call me uncle because uh, that's pretty cool. But the, the centralization of these superheroes being that they take care of their own city. They're not global. They're not trying to take care of the whole planet. Superman focused on Metropolis. Batman's in Gotham. Palmyra City's got Blue Beetle, Central City's got Flash, etc., etc., etc. That kind of works a little bit better. Instead of trying to police the whole world, you just take care of your own. Your heroes in your own community. And I think Blue Beetle representing that is really great. We got to maybe stop thinking globally. Start thinking locally. People are hurting next door. People are hurting in the streets. Yeah, we have big, giant global problems. We got problems here at home. Let's focus on those. The little guy. You know, again, what Spider-Man represents over at Marvel, I feel Blue Beetle, both bugs. Blue Beetle, one's an arachnid, all right, but Blue Beetle represents that as well. Palmyra City's dope, dude. I'd love to live there. I want to go visit. I'll go to the next best place, Miami. Something's calling me to Miami. One of these days, I got to go. Kajuda, we are not killers learning from each other due to the very end when the alien entity learned from Jaime. Empathy. Genius. Not the time to mourn. When the family rallies, when Nana rallies the family together, and then when it is the time to mourn and they start crying, oh, man, it's going to get me again. Oof. Blue Beetle's making me tear up. But it was when Jenny was crying. Because <laughs> Alberto is gone. Jaime's life has changed forever, and it's partially her fault. But... Uh, <laughs> Nana waves her in, and she's part of the family now in that group. It just... How can it be that stuff is so simple can have such a great impact? That's the genius of storytelling. It's another superhero movie, but this one stands out. I'm telling you guys. I'm telling you. If, if we have more films like this in the DCU, DC is going to be in good hands. But, phew, it's tricky hands. You've got so many executives up there that have no goddamn idea what they're doing. Oh, <laughs> okay. Not the time to mourn, all right? Uh, but when it was a time to mourn, it very effective you can't buy family with money what a lesson to teach kids there's something innate there's something inert in us to bond collectively as a tribe as a group and family is forever stuff passes away as Rudy says in the movie stuff goes away as you know or was it his dad I think it was his dad, Alberto, saying like things come and go. Oh yeah, he's talking about the house and everything, and like everything has its season. We're on a journey. This is just part of the journey. I'm like, what a great pep talk from from a dad, you know. And the amount of weight that's on Jaime's shoulders of having debt from school and his family losing the house, losing the shop. Just it's oh, it was a lot. It was a lot. But his dad's like, we're gonna make it through because family lasts forever. You know, you hear that when you're younger all the time, all the time. I hear it a lot from my dad. You know, nothing replaces family. Nothing's better than family. 
And there are times when you kind of wobble with that when you're in your 20s, maybe 30s. But uh, it's true. I will trust the wisdom of my elders when they say, there's nothing like family. What a, what a fun film. What a great film. I, I'm making a review about this, and I'm talking about like the deepest parts of happiness in life not coming from material things, but coming from family. So again, kudos to the entire creative team, to every actor, VFX artists, the editors, everyone that was a part of this movie. In a whole sea of ups and downs when it comes to superhero films, everyone that was a part of Blue Beetle should be proud and have it at the top of the resume. I love to hear your thoughts, chat. I love to hear what you have to say in the comments down below. If you saw the film and loved it, or maybe if you had some quips or qualms with it, I'm happy to read them and respond. But uh, let's help this one out. Let's see in theaters. Vote with your dollars. And if it doesn't do too hot in theaters, I think word of mouth is really going to help in the digital world and on streaming. But if this is the first DCU film, as James Gunn said, then I welcome Jaime Reyes and his entire family to the DCU. And I can't wait to see what's in store for Blue Beetle. Thanks, everybody, for watching my spoiler review for Blue Beetle. It's YouTube. You know what to do. Like and subscribe. And I'll see you online.